Imagine, if you will, we're hitching a ride back in time. Destination, Seth and the mesmerizing channeled works penned by Jane Roberts. Now, trying to stuff all that brilliance into one coherent piece is a Herculean task. Seth, whether you believe he's a spectral tutor or just a figment of Jane's imaginative subconscious, was an unparalleled maestro of reality creation. The knowledge he imparted? Pure golden enlightenment. Today, my friends, our exploration takes a dreamy detour. Many people, experts and gurus, have bandied about concepts like dream symbolism, lucid dreaming, dream of space exploration and all that cosmic jazz. But Seth pushes beyond those boundaries. He delves into the profound historical role dreams have played in the evolution of humanity. He talks about dreams as the architects of existence. Ponder on that for a moment. Seth challenges the ironclad partitions we've erected between the states of consciousness and unconsciousness, waking and sleeping. He argues that these distinctions emerged when Homo sapiens began to drift from their psychological roots. The repercussions? Oh, they're profound. He asserts that our skewed perception of reality springs from this very dichotomy. The unconscious, darkness, death all are draped in fear, mistrusted and shunned. Our bodies are deprived of the rejuvenation that sleep provides. Seth argues for a symbiotic relationship between the conscious and the unconscious, facilitated by sleep. He envisions sleep as a grand connector, where conscious and unconscious thoughts mingle freely. An interesting proposition, wouldn't you say? Dreams, in Seth's philosophy, are founts of wisdom and creativity, far from mere figments of our subconscious. He talks about a universe within our minds, a metaphysical lab where we test potential life scenarios. Picture it as a crucible of creation where we explore a vast tableau of possibilities before we manifest them in our physical reality. Sounds uncannily like our contemporary theories on dreams being rehearsals for life, doesn't it? Look at infants. Seth claims they crawl and babble in dreams way before they exhibit such behaviors in their waking lives. Dreams, he says, serve as informative gateways for children who cannot yet explore the world physically. According to Seth, without dreams there'd be no learning, no memory. Here's where it gets intriguing. Seth introduces a method similar to dream incubation, where one can carry the waking eye into the dream state. This allows for the creative testing and forming of ideas and beliefs in this highly plastic environment. He posits that in dreams we come truly alive, grasping our spiritual and physical identities, realizing they hold far more depth than we'd believed. In essence, Seth's perspective on dreams aligns with several spiritual traditions. He underlines the importance of the inner reality, the creative powerhouse within our dreams, from which our individual realities emerge. Despite the skepticism of modern science, Seth insists on the validity and pivotal role of this inner reality. Seth considers dream exploration to be both an art and a science. He likens dream explorers to intrepid adventurers navigating uncharted territories. It's not a pursuit for the faint-hearted, though. It demands training, dedication, and a profound understanding of one's own dream symbolism. Seth's dream universe isn't just a personal bubble. It's interconnected with the dreams of the world. Drawing parallels with Carl Jung's concept of the collective unconscious, Seth emphasizes that our shared dream memory as a species nurtures our creativity and inventiveness. It's where we preview our collective futures. He illustrates this concept with the example of nuclear power. Once a dream, an imaginative spark within a few individuals, it gradually permeated the collective consciousness through arts and fiction, and eventually became a reality. Seth's views on dreams bear an uncanny resemblance to Carl Jung's interactions with Philammon, who taught Jung about the objective reality of the inner world. Jane Roberts' experiences with Seth seem to echo this. As she put it, Seth's teachings on dreams could easily fill a book. Seth, the dream sage, the spectral shaman, the whispered wisdom from the depths of the psyche. He schooled us in the art of dreams, their recollection, their symbolic manifestation, their messages from the fringes of our health, and their potential to be revisited. He urged us to strip away the facade of the waking personality, to dialogue with the wisdom figure residing within. The journey can be daunting, sure. The waking self might initially balk at this unearthly wisdom, but persevere, and the dialogue evolves becomes more accessible, less jarring. Imagine this evolution as home renovations. You discover new rooms in your mind. You expand your mental real estate. The wisdom figure, once an enigmatic stranger, blends into your waking personality. You start to tap directly into the archetypal wellspring of wisdom. 
Unless, of course, your waking personality digs its heels in. Resists. If that happens, the expansion halts. Jane Roberts fell into this very trap. Despite Seth's guidance, her fears, her self-blame spiraled, and she chose, in her words, death. Let's plunge into a fascinating segment from dreams, evolution, value, and fulfillment, shall we? Seth paints a vivid, surreal image of our ancestral dreamers, who spent more time in dreamland than in the waking world. It was a slow-paced existence, where mankind and animals slumbered for extended periods, awakening only to cater to their basic needs. This dream state was a psychedelic playground. The nascent consciousness experimented with language, envisioned civilizations, flirted with time. It was as if our ancestors, the creatures and the environment, co-dreamt their existence into reality. Nature's rules were still taking shape. Gravity hadn't yet claimed its throne. Mankind existed in harmony with the elements, their sense of self extending beyond their physical form. In this dream state, mankind performed mental gymnastics of the highest order. They transferred their inner knowledge into their physical form. They learned to maintain their bodily functions, to acclimatize to their environment, to maintain balance and regulate their body temperature. This was all learned in dreams. And then, the tide began to shift. Mankind started to awaken, to become more deeply entrenched in the physical world, to hone their exterior senses. But even now, dreams serve as our link to our origins, to the birth of the universe as we perceive it. Language, in Seth's view, was a product of dreams. In the dreamscape, mankind learned to form words, to string them together into sentences, and to infuse them with meaning. As we became more tethered to the physical realm, we started to rely on language to replace the instant inner communication that the dream state offered. Hence, the similarities in early cultures, cave drawings and religions, as they were all seeded from the same dream source. Our bodies learned to heal in dreams, to maintain their strength, agility and balance. All portions of our consciousness contribute to the health and stability of our existence. The universe, as Seth sees it, is a cooperative, loving collaboration of all its parts. Life, in its purest form, embodies this actualization of cooperation. Seth's grand vision of dreams, a realm where we learn to exist, to communicate, to heal. In dreams, we are not just the architects of our individual realities, but also of the universe itself. A grand dream co-op, if you will. Dreams, he says, are not mere mental murmurings, but the complex dance of emotions and beliefs, choreographed into a symphony of symbolic images. Think of a dream as a cryptic letter from your unconscious, hinting at a future illness, perhaps, or inviting you to revisit a past scene. Seth is not just any dream tutor. He is an archetypal wisdom figure, a spiritual shaman echoing in our psyche. There is a delicate tango between this wisdom figure and our waking personality, a dialogue that shapes our psycho-spiritual evolution. Initially, the wisdom figure might seem like an enigma, a source of confusion or even fear, but with time, this dialogue becomes more lucid, more accessible. Imagine discovering hidden rooms in your mental mansion, expanding your consciousness to accommodate these new insights. As you merge with this wisdom figure, you start tapping directly into the archetypal reservoir of wisdom, which could be interrupted if the waking personality decides to resist. Let's meander through an extract from Jane Roberts's Dreams, Evolution, Value and Fulfillment. Seth sketches a vivid portrait of our ancient ancestors, the original dreamers. They spent more time dreaming than they did in their waking lives, navigating a dream realm where they could experiment with language and civilization, without the constraints of time and space. In this dreamscape, every possible entity was actualized. Every future, every past was dreamt into being. Our bodies, Seth suggests, were shaped in dreams. In the dream state, we learned to maintain our bodily functions, to interact with our environment. In dreams, we learned the art of healing, the nuances of physical coordination that would have overwhelmed our conscious minds. In Seth's view, every cell in our bodies is precognitive. It's aware of the state of every other cell on the planet, of every grain of sand on every shore. The cell, Seth suggests, is a microcosm of the Earth's consciousness. Your intellect, he argues, operates on the thrust of this unconscious power of instant knowing, a characteristic of the body consciousness. Seth describes the self as a psychological rubber band, snapping between the inward dream-oriented inner self and the outward adventure-seeking body consciousness. It's a dynamic dance of psychological duality, a vital part of our evolutionary journey. He discusses how the inner self created a physical counterpart, 
an ego that sought physical experiences, adventures that the inner self alone couldn't have. This ego, he suggests, is the consciousness you recognize as your own, the consciousness that's attuned to the physical world, that revels in the fleeting brilliance of the present, that experiences the cycle of seasons, the ebb and flow of civilizations. This ego looks outward, is bound to light and darkness, sound and touch. It's the ego that lives the life of the body, the ego that is aware of itself, plunging deeper into the layers of Seth's philosophy. The self, he says, is more than a singular entity. It's a trinity of sorts, an inner self, a body consciousness, and the consciousness we know as our own. Each of these systems is like a different song, contributing to the grand symphony of consciousness. The very nature of existence, Seth implies, is a fluid, ever-changing tapestry of interactions among these three systems. And these systems, in his view, are inherent to all forms of existence, whether it's a rock or a human, a fly or a star. Each of these entities possesses an inner self, a body consciousness, and an outward-focused consciousness. The inner self, the crux of our identity, is forever dreaming, forever journeying within. Planet Earth isn't just a spinning ball of rock and water. It's a stage for the performance of physicality. We're drawn to it, not in spite of, but because of its challenges and constraints. We savor the unique blend of joy and suffering that Earth provides, the myriad sensations it offers. According to Seth, every entity, every consciousness in the universe seeks to experience this sensation. Our bodies are built for reaction, designed to relish the natural stress of our environment. They revel in the sensation of balance and imbalance. They find joy in their own vitality. Our body consciousness equips us with a sense of power, a sense of belonging, a sense of security. This consciousness is an expression of our inner self's desire to explore, to experience, to exist in the physical realm. Seth discusses a fascinating concept, the birth of our physical ego from the inner self. The ego, he suggests, is our window to the physical world, the part of us that craves physical experiences. This ego is caught in the ebb and flow of time, the changing seasons, the rise and fall of civilizations. Seth also sheds light on our dream experiences. He describes a dream as a palette where we can paint our probable acts, experiment with our potential actions. In our dreams, our thoughts and emotions gain life and form, creating landscapes that reflect our inner realities. He emphasizes that dreams are not mere figments of our imagination, but exist in terms of energy, within ranges beyond the reach of our physical senses. Our dreams, Seth suggests, are our personal creative studios, where we plan and rehearse our actions. He warns us, however, that our dream experiences cannot be translated directly into our waking lives. There must be a clear demarcation between the dream world and the physical world, so that we can function effectively in our daily lives. Now let's dive even deeper, my friends, into the cavernous realms of the human consciousness. Seth proposes the idea of a conscious foray into the dream state, an exploration of uncharted territory. Picture yourself embarking on this quest, your conscious self sailing into the twilight realm of dreams. Now you may argue that dreams and wakefulness are two different ball games. One, a surreal realm of abstract concepts, the other a world of tangible realities. True, but according to Seth, this is more of a societal construct, an artificial barrier erected by our collective beliefs. Our dreams, he suggests, are not just remnants of our day's musings, but creative fountains that provide solutions to our problems. It's a whole different reality, where thoughts and emotions take on a physical form and create landscapes mirroring our inner realities. They exist within their own realm of energy, outside our standard physical perceptions. Seth invites us to the idea of experiencing these dreams consciously, to actively participate and guide our dream narratives. He even goes as far as suggesting that this ability to consciously dream can liberate our hidden wisdom and provide a more unified perspective of life. Then he takes us on a journey into the world of sensations, the direct experience of life through our senses. In his view, when we abandon our conscious focus on physical reality, we allow our subconscious to explore other dimensions. We taste new flavors of existence. We let ourselves be immersed in the river of sensations, sometimes getting lost in its currents, at other times simply letting it guide us. Interestingly, he also talks about how our physical perception is closely tied to our neurological structure. When we think about our existence after death, we still see it through the lens of our physical perceptions. We imagine a non-physical body, but we still see, hear, feel and experience sensations, just like we do now. 
This implies that our consciousness is far more vast and complex than what we perceive in our physical reality. According to Seth, our consciousness is capable of traveling to its source, of connecting with the infinite energy that powers our existence. He also suggests that our consciousness isn't confined to the limitations of space and time. In our dreams, we can access a broader spectrum of experiences, a wider range of events. We can glimpse the past, the present and the future all at once. But what about when we wake up? Do these dream experiences mean anything in our physical reality? Seth reassures us that these explorations into the depths of our consciousness can rejuvenate us, providing us with an energy boost exactly when we need it. Even if we can't remember these dream experiences in their entirety, they still offer a unique perspective on our existence and have the potential to enrich our waking lives. In short, Seth presents us with a new lens to look at our consciousness, one that transcends the boundaries of our physical existence and delves into the abstract realm of dreams and sensations. He invites us to embrace our dreams as a canvas of creative expression. To see our consciousness as an explorer venturing into the wilderness of existence, and to perceive our waking lives as a singular perspective in the multifaceted reality of existence. Here we are, exploring this idea of physical reality and how it operates on frequencies we don't normally perceive. Seth, our unorthodox guide, is suggesting that space isn't static. It has its own rhythm, its own speed, if you will. And it's not just the space that's speeding, time is also doing its dance at its own pace. The idea is that everything, every point in space and time, is like a doorway leading to a whole new dimension, a new experience. But most of us, we're not locksmiths. We haven't found the keys to unlock these doors. Our minds, our beliefs, they create barriers, limiting the areas of our brain we can activate, restricting the vast potential of our mind. And then there's the dream state. You know, we often see dreams as these abstract, surreal landscapes, a different reality altogether. But according to Seth, they're not just random images floating in our subconscious. They're playgrounds for our creativity, places where we can test new concepts and ideas in a state of playfulness. Our dreams, he says, are extensions of our physical reality, providing solutions to our problems. They allow us to explore our own consciousness to see what's hidden beneath the surface. And the interesting thing is, these dream realities, they're not just solitary experiences. We're all part of a collective dream, shaping it, influencing it, contributing to its evolution. He even suggests that historical events, wars, battles, they're first fought and decided in the dream state. We then physically act out the chosen outcome in our reality. It's as if dreams are the scriptwriters, and we're the actors playing out the scenes. But what happens when we wake up? Do these dream experiences have any significance in our physical reality? Seth assures us that they do. He believes that our journeys into the dream state can rejuvenate us, providing us with the energy we need during times of stress. Even if we can't remember these experiences, they still enrich our waking lives, adding a unique perspective to our existence. Seth claims that our consciousness dances with energy. Picture it like a lighthouse, its light beams spreading across vast oceans of space and time, illuminating doorways into different dimensions of existence. And while we might see ourselves as solitary beings, Seth argues that we're part of a grand cosmic performance, each one of us a unique incarnation of the larger dance of life. Then there's this idea of dreams. For Seth, dreams aren't just hallucinatory echoes of our daily lives. They're creative platforms where we can weave new realities, try out fresh perspectives. He urges us to see dreams not just as intangible illusions, but as powerful tools for our own self-development. But what if we take a step back and look at dreams from a collective perspective? Seth suggests that dreams aren't just individual journeys. They're a shared adventure, where each one of us contributes to its evolution. It's like we're all members of a gigantic dream theater, scripting, directing, and enacting our realities. And get this, Seth proposes that historical events, wars, victories, defeats, they're all decided in the dream state first. It's like our dreams are the architects and our reality is the building. Every brick, every window, every room shaped and placed according to the dream blueprint. Now what about when we wake up? Does the dream fade away? Its traces lost in the morning light? Not quite, according to Seth. These journeys into our dream state rejuvenate us, providing us with the much needed energy during times of stress. Even if we can't remember them, they continue to add depth and meaning to our waking lives. To sum it all up, our dreams are like brushstrokes on the canvas of our collective reality. 
Every night we delve into the depths of our subconscious, where time and space are but mere concepts. We navigate through the ocean of infinite possibilities, charting courses that we'll sail in our waking hours. Seth urges us not to downplay our dreams, not to dismiss them as meaningless gibberish. They're creative forces, fundamental players in the grand symphony of life. We dream, not just when we sleep, but every moment of our existence, whether we realize it or not. So next time you find yourself lost in the maze of your dreams, remember this. You're not just a passive observer, you're an active creator. Your dreams hold the blueprints of your reality, the roadmap to your destiny. Trust in their wisdom, in their creative potential. Let them guide you on your journey towards self-realization and personal growth. And who knows, perhaps in the grand scheme of things, the dreams we weave today might be the realities we live tomorrow. After all, as Seth himself suggests, the barriers between our waking and dreaming states are merely illusions. There's a fascinating universe inside each one of us, just waiting to be discovered. In the final analysis, our dreams aren't just echoes of our subconscious. They're whispering guides, courageous explorers, visionary architects. They're the silent partners in our dance with reality, the unseen maestros orchestrating the symphony of our existence. So dream on, fellow explorers of consciousness, dream on, for in dreams we find the key to unlock the vast potential of our being.